given the size of large language models in billions of parameters how do you figure out how much gpu vram you need in this video i am going to share you with this tool which is vram estimator to have an educated guess how much gpu vram do you need and or in other words which gpu should arrange in order to run a model locally this tool has been created by uh, Esminarov and he also has got a GitHub repo where you can go and read more detail and even install and build it locally. So if you look at this VRAM calculator, it sounds pretty interesting. It deals with both inference and training um, scenarios. Normally people do inference in order to generate text or do other sort of stuff with LLM but if you are doing training even then you can calculate the number of GPUs. So for example if I just click on inference and also when we are doing inference uh, normally inference runs on float 16 which means 2 bytes per parameter. For a 7 billion parameter model for example you would need about 14 GB of RAM to run it in floating, float 16 precision. And usually the training or fine tuning is done on float 16 or float 32. But I would highly suggest if you are doing inference then it works very well in float 16. Now if you look at these various parameters which you have to set then it can become quite confusing so let me explain them in detail one by one. Now if you are just looking to see how much uh, RAM you need all you need to do is to put in all of these parameters select your model for example I'm going to select maybe Mistral and you can see that you would need around I'll go with GP around 16 GB of VRAM in your GPU so if you have that much GPU you are good to go now let me explain all of these parameters first so first we will start from this uh, precision parameters and we have selected floating point 16 for inference because that is what is recommended so first up is sequence length. Sequence length refers to the number of tokens which are words or pieces of words that the model can process in a single input. It is also called as context window. That is the maximum number of tokens that the model can handle in one go. Then we have batch size. Batch size affects how model like LLMs learn during training and how they process data during inference. It is quite vital when it comes to how the model learn from data and how they process input when making predictions or generating text. The batch size is the number of training examples or data points used in one iteration of model training. In other words, batch size is the number of examples the model looks at before it updates its internal parameters. For instance, if the batch size is 100, the model will process 100 examples and then update its weights during the training or fine tuning. When it comes to inference or generating text or making prediction, in other words, the batch size refers to the number of input examples processed at the same time. For example, if an LLM is used to translate sentences, a batch size of 10 would mean it's translating 10 sentences at the same time. Then we have model parameters. Now all of these model parameters you can easily get from this config.json file on hugging face. We have selected Mistral so if you go to Mistral's model card on hugging face and click on files you will find this config.json and if you look at the content of this config.json you will find all of these parameters for example here the number of hidden layers are 32. If you go to this VRAM calculator you can see that number of layers are 32 and it is using the name of this model as parameters preset. Parameter preset is a way to describe the fixed configuration of parameters that define a particular instance of a model. When we say parameter, parameters are simply the aspects of model that are learned from the training data. They are the weights and biases in the network that are adjusted through the learning process. Then we have number of layers which we just saw. So layers in LLM refer to the depth of neural network used in the model and that is typically based on transformer architecture and in that context a layer is a collection of neurons or nodes that process input data. 
each layer performs certain computation and passes its output to the next layer. Then we have vocab size. The vocab or vocabulary size is the number of unique tokens that the model's tokenization algorithm can handle. It's a predetermined size set during the training of the model. This set of tokens form the basis for the model's understanding and generation of the text. Now, then we have this hidden size. For hidden size, this is related to the hidden layer. So in these neural networks, hidden layers are the layers between the input and the output layers. Input layer is the first layer, output layer is the last layer. So hidden layers are where most of the computation happens. Each layer consists of a number of nodes or neurons and each neuron processes input data and passes its in output to the next layer. The hidden size specifically refers to the number of neurons or units in each hidden layer of the network. It's a measure of capacity of the layer to capture information. The hidden size dictates the size of the vectors that represents words or tokens at each layer. Cool. Then we have something interesting called as number of attention layer. Now attention is all we need. Attention is what made all of this transformer ar architecture and this uh, huge innovation in generative AI at the moment. So let me first explain what attention mechanism is. Uh, this whole transformer architecture, which is uh, which is at the core of these modern LLMs, relies heavily on an attention mechanism. This mechanism allows the model to focus on different parts of the input sequence for each prediction it makes, which is crucial for understanding the context and nuances of language. Now, another concept is multi-headed attention. In a transformer model, the attention mechanism is often implemented as multi-headed attention. This means that the model doesn't just look at the input sequence with a single focus or point of view. Instead, model has multiple attention heads, each of which can independently attend to different parts of the input sequence. So number of attention heads refers to how many such independent attention processes or heads the model has in each, each soft layer. For example, if a model has 12 attention heads in each layer, each of these heads can potentially focus on different parts of the input allowing the model to capture a diverse range of dependencies and relationship in the data. Okay, I hope that that was uh, useful. Then we have intermediate size. Intermediate size is an, in an LLM is an important aspect of models feed forward neural network within each transformer layer. So primarily it affects the model's ability to process and transform the information extracted by the attention mechanism. Now, then we have something called as number of key value uh, heads. This is more relevant when we have grouped query attention or GQA and each attention head uses its own set of keys and values to process input data, contributing to the model's ability to understand and generate language. So you can see that once we select the model, it presents as how much uh, memory or how much VRAM in GPU we need. So for example, if you select the Microsoft file, this is this, this just requires 7 gig of it. And then there are a lot of the, if you're using CUDA kernel, it is using this uh, much memory in purple. And most of the memory you can see is being used by parameters. And then a little bit for the activations. Activations in a neural network refers to a function that helps the network decide how much signal to pass from one layer to the next. In simpler terms, it's like a gatekeeper that decides how much information should move forward in the network. And there are a lot of activation functions such as sigmoid, tan, and ReLU or rectified linear unit. So that's it guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Now, even if you don't uh, see the, the model which you are looking at here, you can simply go to this config.json in that model card, pull out these values and then you can calculate it uh, simply by putting in those values here and it should give you the information. We are looking for the code and formula being used. As I mentioned, it is in the GitHub repo of this uh, creator, which you can easily go and check it out. So that's it. I will drop the link to this VRAM estimator in video description and then you can play around with it. One word of caution, it's not 
hundred percent accurate. So there is a room of error. So just keep that in mind. But it should give you a fairly good idea. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, please share it among your network. Thanks for watching.